It's the 14th of February 2019. I'm David Griffin. I'm here at Ashover and I'm talking to Bernie Mayer. Bernie, thanks once again for joining us in this delightful setting. Um, we talked in the first interview about your early years in cricket at Hillingdon and then joining Derbyshire. Yeah. Um, I think we reached the point where Bob Taylor's probably retired, 84, yeah. and you've got an opportunity then to, to make the, the job of first mm -hmm. team keeper your own. Um, you had a few setbacks in 85. Yeah. Um, but I think the next few years, certainly, you cemented your place both as the first team wicketkeeper, but also yeah. as a batsman. Can I yeah. just touch on the batting bit first? Because yeah. Yeah. you were just shy, I think, 26 runs shy of 1,000 runs in 1988. So yeah. what, what prompted the move to, to the top of the order? Um, I, I just think, in a way, um, uh, in, it's mainly second team you know, cricket. Um, uh, and uh, I just... I always worked hard, worked hard at the game. Um, I knew probably my time at Derbyshire was over, um, so I just got, I just started back. And I, first thing I did, I went and played uh, club cricket at Steetley and not Notts League on a really good wicket. You know, it bounced a bit, but a, um, and I got striking runs there. And then every single time I played second team, I just got 100 or 90 or eight every single time. And um, it shows you how I mentioned. Um, Worcestershire, the, the, the county ground there. I remember um, me and Andy Brown uh, opened the batting, and um, we got in a mix-up in the middle. And I and I ran towards the end. I was like 10, 15 yards short <laughs> almost of the. And the keeper, the ball straight forward take. The keeper dropped the ball, and I dived in. I was on 20, and I got 178, not right. out. And and that that was the thing that got me. Um, in the first team, as uh, Phil Russell took me out for dinner and said, um, you know, how do you feel? I said, yeah, yeah. He said, well, how about playing as a batsman? Uh, you think you do? I said, yeah. So I played against Warwickshire um, and I just opened the batting there. Um, and then, um, you know, not as keep, uh, um, Chris was keeping quite rightly, um, and I just, I just played as a as, as a batsman. What was it like opening the batting with Kim? Because Kim was a an absolute dasher, wasn't he? Yeah, what, yeah. What was it like? Was there much dialogue between the two? Yeah, of you? yeah. He's very good. Running. I enjoyed running between the wickets with him. Um, but the thing was, with with his unorthodox style, out batting outside, um, leg stump, and walking across, uh, he was just amazingly on anything wide, and he was just outside, mm. off stump. We went for four. Of course, nowadays, you know, they'd have had you know a point on straight yeah. away now. But then they just had a third man or no third man. Of course, he, I've been looking at the scoreboard. He'd be on after two overs, 26, 28, or something like that. And I would be, I, I, my technique was just to grind it out. That's why I played on our green wickets. And I would, that was my <laughs> role. That's why I played. And I remember chatting um, uh, uh, one of the uh, A. A. Jones for Glamorgan. He said, "Don't look on scoring runs." He said, "Look on playing deliveries. If you can." play a certain number of del deliveries by a certain time and knock you out, you'll have a score. And that's the way it looks like. So I played every ball uh, uh, rather than scoring runs, which is the sort of thing now, was to survive. Well, it's interesting that we've just had uh, three test series, haven't we, in the West Indies, where everyone <laughs> is talking about that very thing that yeah, we can't yeah. find, which is a, an obdurate yeah. batsman who can bat yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, so I, and the, the biggest thing is, well, as an opener, it's not what you play, it's what you leave. Yeah. You know, you see, I'm looking now. I'm watching the Test match the other day. One's playing that far wide off stump. You used to leave, you leave yes. the ball. Um, it's the art of leaving, which is, um, you know, that's why. I, and I got runs. That was the thing. And of course, you got a, uh, uh, your first century for Derbyshire in first team cricket, first class. Uh, yeah. It was against the tour in New Zealand. As I in, did, yeah, in, in, in 86. Yeah, yeah. Um, it must have been a very proud moment. For yeah, you it to, was. To do it that. was. Um, you know, my dad's obviously gone there. My mother, you know, she was disabled. She was in the uh, watching and watching, um, so yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. You know, to work really hard. Um, uh, you know, against the the uh, touring side, I went for a stupid second run and got run out. <laughs> it was proper touring sides, then, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, yeah. You put a good side out. They put a good yeah, side. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. <coughs> and we had the green wickets again. Um, so it was a you know fantastic time. Just kept on, and I remember Je I came in. I, I had to get some. Like, I was on 92, and Jeremy Coney came on and bowled me two wide balls, and I clattered them both for four. So, so the rest is history, you know. Yeah, yeah. And and but of course you were still you were opening the batting and keeping wicket. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's always the, the this is such a huge challenge. I know Farouk Engineer did it in the 
prior to your first class career, and I know yeah. Alex Stewart did it yeah. for a while, but yeah, phenomenal it keeper. must be quite a, a challenging, uh, there must be a reason why most wicket keepers don't over the batting. It, the thing is, it's you, what a lot of people don't realise, okay, you, you're always playing with knocks on your, uh, you, you, you know, playing knocks mm. on your hands, the ball will fly off and, you, you know, it'll, it'll be a take or a, normally fielding. Um, but the, the, the thing you try and do, the biggest thing people understand, it's the tiredness. Because you, you know, you, you, by the time you pick the helmet, you're going back 35 yards, and you've got you're going 22 yards, another 35 all day. And then the, if the ball gets thrown in from the boundary or run out, you're running up to the stumps, and it's fitness. Um, and the squat every single ball. Squatting's not too bad. Is it not? No, no, that wasn't too too bad. It's it's because you you kind of. You know that's a relaxing position. I used to sort of keep my legs, can't keep my legs reasonably straight. Yeah. But it that is a thing. And then you know Nick goes at four o'clock and you miss it. Yeah. Um, and and you've had a bad day. That's the thing with the keeper. Um, but that was one thing I did do in 1985. I was sponsored by Slazinger, and the, the the gloves are a part. That, you know you, you take your gloves back to the hotel with you. You don't leave them. And I, and I wasn't happy with my gloves, and you've got to be so confident either way. The ball goes out, you take it, and it's just yeah. like having a normal pair of hands. And I was never happy with the um, the gloves, but I got I went in uh, in Auckland. I went down, travelled down from the Fongarain, the north of uh, the North Island, down to Auckland to the, the Cookaburra distributor, and I got like nine pairs of old gloves that had been returned. Really? And I basically, they, they were just like they were the most wonderful gloves I had, and that was the big difference in my keeping. Right. Suddenly, you know, the, the ball went, I'd just catch it. And yeah. Did a lot of work on you know, my left hand and my right hand. Um, but uh, that is the big thing. It's like being in the front row at rugby. Everyone thinks they can do it. You can do it for a game or two. But very few people, if you're not a natural keeper, can yeah. keep on doing it. Alex Stewart was phenomenal to do what he did because he, you know, the catches he took, he was an yeah. absolute, you know, one in a million. He doesn't get enough credit to yeah. so open the batting and then keep wicket. Is is, you know, is the tiredness and fatigue, and you've still got you speak, still people expect you to take everything that comes to you. You can't drop anything. Yeah. There's only twice I've ever not dropped a ball all day. That's mean that's takes, not catches, yeah. takes. Yeah. I've done it twice and no one noticed. No one noticed. <laughs> I did. It must have been quite a challenging time as well because we've got then some of the quickest and most mm. fiery yeah. fast bowlers, shall we say. Yeah. Stan Mortensen, the Dane, yeah. who, who was yeah. pretty nippy on his day and did, yeah. certainly did a lot with he the did. ball. He did, fantastic. You've got Michael Holden, who was yeah. the Rolls Royce of fast bowlers. Yeah. And then, of course, we got Devon, who, uh, <laughs> Devon Malcolm in his early days, I mean, he had the wrong prescription for his glasses, didn't he? And couldn't yeah. even run straight, never mind bowl straight. And, yeah. I mean, he went on to take a thousand first class yeah, wickets, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. not going to denigrate him. But what was it like for you as a keeper, uh, keeping to these different, um, disparate individual fast yeah. bowlers? The, the, always the, what, the keepers, the, 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 the Bowlers that are hard to keep to are the ones that hit the deck. Like now, all Mortensen, Ian Bishop, they you, you'd keep well. The ball would move a long, long way. You'd go, God, you're keeping well today. That was that was easy stuff. The hard ones were. Why like, was that? Because you could follow it. Follow it. Follow it going. Off it's, the pitch yeah, and just. Or it, yeah. You know, Michael was really, really hard because the ball he hit the wicket and the ball would d dip. As it came to you, it, right. it, and it, the ones it'd rise maybe six inches. It got like a couple of feet from you. And uh, really, really, he was he was tough. Simon Bass was like that. Yes. Um, and that's where you get little knocks. Cause it might you might not take the ball. You might no always kept not quite cleanly. Cleanly, yeah. you might hit your, your finger. And I watch even young Bearstow keeping and cringe sometimes when he does that. Yes. You know, instead of cu reverse cupping. Yeah. Um, who was but, the quickest of them all, Bernie? Was it was it was it was Michael still? I know occasionally I remember him at Chelmsford. Yeah. Going off his long run and yeah. bowling Graham Gooch, but he, he was yeah. past his very, yeah. very quickly. I'd, I'd say, I think Devon, De Devon, and I think Devon was probably just pushed it, but Ian Bishop was very, very quick as well. Michael, the odd ball, you know, at Chesterfield, he used to make it fly, especially with the, you know, with 35 minutes to bowl the yeah. opposition. <laughs> he was phenomenal. Um, but uh, quickest, prob probably right, Devon. Probably Devon, but it, it all goes with the surface again. Going back to you know talking about the difference between club cricket and playing, you know, at Derbyshire, you used to be a lot of grass on them. You played on rock hard wickets, and and, and the ball just skid off, and you know, yeah. Colchester, places like that. 
uh, Chesterfield. I, I didn't play Uxbridge other than club cricket, but that was another quick wicket, you know. What um, about keeping to spinners? I know Derbyshire, you know, Miller was was, yeah. was about to leave Essex by the time you became yeah. an established yeah. player, I think. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and, and, and really, we didn't have frontline spinners again until he came back, actually, for that one yeah. season in 1990. Yeah. But yeah. presumably a completely different art. Yeah, standing yeah. Up to the uh, off spin is the hardest to keep to. Um, the one, because the, the batsman will go down the wicket and it'll go between bat and pad. The batsman is a long way down, and oh, look at that, he's missed the stump in there. Yeah. And I always found, I remember I had um, uh, David East phone me up from Essex, and David said, um, I'm struggling with Jeff. He was struggling because Jeff was a flight bowler yes. and almost put a lot of revs on the ball, and he wasn't like he hit, hit mm. your gloves. And he and, and, I, and I was pleased he phoned me because I said, Yeah, I had, I had the same problem. You've got to wait and wait and wait. He's a bold little drifter. Yeah. Um, so, but the, the thing with with spinners are spinners is it's it's concentration and you've got to really really watch the ball you know right the way you know you, you expect the batsman to miss it every yeah. time that's what i did well 1987 you uh, you scored two more first class hundreds you got one at fanners yeah uh, you okay. scored one against surrey which <coughs> excuse me <laughs> must have been very satisfying in the county yeah. championship yeah um but you also uh I think got 72 catches and four stumpings, which put you top of the. Yeah. Uh, did you get anything for that? Was there a prize for, for doing that? Nope. All <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> no. You'd be in the MVP yeah. now. There, I think were, it's there was the most a valuable player. They, they had a thing that I think it was Gordon's Gin had a. Just it just finished a couple of years mm. earlier, where um, Godfrey Evans used to present. He used to have a yeah. dinner with the, with the with the keepers and. Yeah, but no, no, nothing but, at all. But nonetheless, it must be quite rewarding yeah, to know was. that in that year. And yeah. I, 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 I also find it's easy easy for people to say, and you've already just said, you know, mm. people expect you to take the, the catch at the last minute of the day. Mm. Um, oh, well, it's just a keeper. But <coughs> somebody's got to be top of the list, and you've got to do it by catching the ball and yeah. taking the stumpings and whatever. Yeah. So, I, I mean, think it's for me and Jack Richards, because yes. really, Jack Richards was up there. Yeah, I think yeah. we played Middlesex in the final game, and we, we heard their game had finished. Yeah. Surrey's game had finished, so yeah. you were able to... Yeah. To take the uh, yeah. the top. Well, I think I dived in. I think I d uh, John Embry was in. And I dived in front of second, slipped to catch it. I wouldn't have gone for it normally. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Happy yeah, was days. It. Yeah, it was happy, happy days. days. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you 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 just before we move on to '88 because that was quite an interesting season too. Mm. Um, can I just ask you? You're at the top of the order batting. I've asked you with the quickest that you kept it, yeah. but you played without a shadow of a doubt in a golden age of county cricket yeah. in England, yeah. and no question because not just some of the greatest players in the world at the time, but some of the greatest of all time. Yeah. You know, Viv Richards was playing, Barry Richards played, you've yeah. got these great Malcolm yeah. Marshall, Imran Khan. Who who were the most challenging, not necessarily the quickest, but the most challenging for you well, as an opening batsman? Well, I said, you know, wherever you played, you, you get up and all, you didn't enjoy your breakfast. Yeah. You'd be very quiet. Um, You're not the only one that no, said that. No, you didn't enjoy your breakfast. You, if you went, well, we'll start, let's start from down south. You went Sussex, you had Imran Khan, Garth LaRue. Okay, at Hove on a yeah. quick one. Okay, then you'd go Middlesex, you'd have Wayne Daniel, um, Norman Cowan, and the rest of them, Neil Williams, trying to knock your head off, and then yeah. bring Edmonds and Embry on for a bit, and then yeah. they'd bowl your head again. Um, you, you, you went, obviously, you had um, Neil Mallon, never bowled short at, at North Hants, okay. Marshall at Marshall at Greenwich at Hampshire. Yeah. Um, you'd go, uh, where else we got? Um, we had Patrick Patterson, Clive Lloyd, and then latterly was him Akram at Lancashire. Wacker, uh, did you? You must have played. No, we did play at Wacker. Yeah. Uh, I had Sylve Sylvester Clark. I had oh right, oh, Sylvester course. Clark. He was nasty, wasn't he? Well, round the wicket, yeah. yeah. He come round the wicket, he's swinging the ball at your head. And they had Dave Thomas, who's no longer with us. You know, yeah. um, very, very good, good uh, season side they were. Sorry. Um, and wherever you went, you knew you were going to get it. And if the ball hit you on the bone, it might break something. Yeah. And it was, like I said, it was in here. You got stuck in courage. You know, I um, I was never going to be a test player, so I had to work really hard on the game. And you watch some of the top players and go, how the hell do they do that? Um, you know, whether it's faster reactions, whether it, there's just something in built the way they play the test player. You, you know, Greenwich and Richards, and and you, and you just you go. Crikey, the you know, ball's been bowled at 90 mile an hour and they just ping it off the, the hip like yeah. it's in the back garden with a tennis ball. Which is just reminded me, because I've got a photograph of it actually on my laptop. It's from the Derby Evening Telegraph of you catching Viv Richards off Roger Finney down the lake side at Heena in the John Flair League match. Do you oh, remember, do you remember I, that I, I remember that one because the crowd, 
the crowd, it, it come up, it come up from Somerset to play, yeah. and and the crowd almost booed me because I caught him out. <laughs> the same happened to Miller when he bowled Gr uh, yeah. Richards for North in the <laughs> tour match at Derby in '84. Yeah, and it yeah. was a Sunday in a full yeah. house at Derby, and Miller was booed for bowling the, the yeah. hero. I, that I they played that game. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Fascinating. I want to see if Richards <laughs> get a million, but. Uh, um, just out of interest, I am interested in who the quickest was. Anyone? The one, if you, could, if you uh, were going to name one play, play you, against, you, you, um, that you faced as a batsman? Uh, I, I think day in, day out, and he got quicker after lunch as Marshall. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. At Portsmouth, and the craftsman too. Portsmouth on the green top. Yeah. Well, we, well, we seem to play him at Portsmouth. And the one time we didn't have Marshall, they had a, 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 a raging turner for Raj Maru, the, yes. the, the left arm spinner. Yeah. But um, no, he, he, that, uh, that was... You know that was purely broke my finger at uh, uh, chipped a bone end of my finger at uh, Portsmouth on a green top, yeah. and uh, yeah, they, he 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 was. The thing was, he was short, very very quick. He worked you out. He could move the ball both ways, and he and he got quicker as he got as the day went on. He got yeah. faster and faster, and he come round the wicket at you, and then go over and he'd work you out. Bowl. He, he, he got a lot of wickets bowling here at you, yeah. but you couldn't get out of the way. You see, someone. You know, the taller bowlers you could duck under. Yeah, very skiddy, He's skiddy and very quick. Yeah. Interesting that, um, you know, you look at that period, as we've said, the great fast balls. Ones you'd not mentioned, actually, Hadley and Rice and Frank and yeah, Steve's had there you go, Hadley and Rice. There was quite a rivalry with Knots at that time, yeah, wasn't there? Because oh, yeah. we, we were starting to prepare, well, we were preparing green top pitches. They were doing sort of green in the middle, but but, but roughed up at the ends yeah. for Hemmings and, and Ball, it's, it's, weren't it's, they? Ron Allsop, yes, yeah, so he's the... Uh, like brush one yeah. end up with a wire well, brush it. Yeah, the story end. about that, you know, is that yeah. someone fell asleep in the stand watching the game, <laughs> and he said, "I'm not having that." And he went and bought a brush and went and <laughs> scrubbed off. <coughs> That's uh, the story yeah. I was told. But we, we we always used to draw knots in the the, the zonal matches, yeah. and of course they you know they had, they had Broad Robinson, um, Derek Randall, um, who else? The, um, Rice Birch Hadley. Rice Richard Hadley. Oh, Paul Johnson. Paul Johnson, yeah. And, and then and Hemmings and Ball bowling. Hemmings, uh, and how many England players they had? Yeah. And we'd have, like, we'd have, other than Michael, yeah. a hang, handful of, you know, maybe a couple of England caps. And we used to get the, the rocket for losing to them. You go, well, that, they've got bigger guns. Well, we were hamstrung by that ridiculous rule mm. where because of when we signed Wright and Holding, you could yeah. only play one or the other. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Knotts could play both Rice and Hadley, yeah. Hampshire could play Greenwich yeah. and Marshall. I mean, it was staggeringly in Well, you look down at, ruling. again, another one I've forgotten, at, at Somerset, you had Joel Garner and, yeah. and Viv Richards. I yeah. mean, you know, you put them two in any team and you and you say to, OK, the, the great in both of them is there as well, but you take both of them out, I mean, mm. they're, you know, OK, professional side, but you, you put these two players in, you put... Uh, right and Hadley in any team as well. Yeah, uh, Wrighty always used to say how upsetting it was when they get to a game and he says the, the opposition would look at you and be delighted because <laughs> they realised if Wrighty was there, Michael was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but of course, a great player, John Wright. Yeah. Um, well, we'll just stop there because I know in 1988 we got to a Lords final, you played in it, and, and um, yeah. it was a, an interesting year for Derby. Okay. So um, we'll yeah. just uh, call a halt there and okay. we'll uh, restart in a minute.